I want to welcome everybody to this, uh, is it the seventh webinar? BL? Something like that. Yes, seventh webinar. Uh, where we going, would you believe to start the second instruction? Uh, so, and before we start, um, we're going to have a short alignment as usually, which you see on your screen. Okay? So please, everybody, uh, quieten your lower fields. and focus the attention in the head. And imagine the light of the soul pouring through the mental body, integrating the personality. And we sound the three ohms and imagine the white golden light illuminating the mental body. Om. Purifying the astral body. Om. And strengthening the etheric body. Om. And imagine the fully integrated personality, unified with the white light. Personality Soul Fusion. See the lower triangle representing the personality with the mental body at the apex and the physical and astral bodies at the base of the triangle. The apex of the triangle is pointing upwards. Above the lower triangle, see the brightly lit higher triangle, representing the soul, with its apex pointing downwards. By an act of the will, see these two triangles merging together and forming a six-pointed star. See the six-pointed star as a shining sun representing the soul-infused personality and sound the silent OM to confirm this fusion. A group alignment 
visualize a sphere of pure white light and the group members as a miniature shining suns inside and around the sphere. See a sphere of light linking the heart centers of all the group members. A sphere of light linking the head centers. And a sphere of light linking the Ajna centers of all the group members. Imagine the light rapidly circulating through these three spheres and aligning the three group of centers. Ajna, heart and head into one mind one soul and one will. To confirm the group alignment, we sound the OM as a group. Oh. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, now, what I would like to do, I would like to read the instruction as a whole uh, for the purpose of the webinar to give everybody uh, some idea what is DK discussing in here. And he says, my brother, I have for you today a word of cheer. Part of your life trouble has been that not only have the physical and etheric bodies been too loosely combined, tending therefore to a devitalized condition. The integration between your mental body and your emotional or astral body has also been very poor. Lately you have changed that condition and your mind and your astral body are now integrated. Reflect on what this means, my brother. It means that no longer will your astral body, which walks in the veil of illusion, be the dominant and deciding factor in your experience, as has hitherto been the case, but that your mind nature will come increasingly into control and become the transmitter of illumination as you hold steadily upon your way. You have to make the realization of an hour, the habit of a lifetime. As you know, 
nothing matters but the soul. Nothing counts in the long run but service. Take your mind away from all your personality problems and the problems of those with whom you have chosen to walk in this incarnation, the path of life. Trust their souls. Make and keep contact with them via their souls. Refusing to be glamoured by their personalities. Note as the month slip by what will happen as you hold this attitude of soul attentiveness. Know you not that as you add your soul force to this, ignoring the form aspect, that you can galvanize those souls into increased spiritual activity? But, my brother, as you note these happenings, be not tempted to aid. Leave the personalities to their own wise, pure and loving souls. Rest back in the simplicity of this thought and for the next few months cease from wrestling and be content with the path that your soul has chosen you should follow. Refrain from breathing exercises for they ever give you discomfort and a haunting sense of failure. Each morning for five or ten minutes work with the art of visualization, a creative art. Visualize to yourself a garden in disorder that you are restoring to order and beauty. Rearrange that garden and fill it with flowers, with the songs of birds and with what you have visioned to yourself as the garden of your dreams. See two things happen. There must be restoration of the garden and its growth in beauty. Let your imagination guide you day by day into the steady work of restoration. Remembering the goal of this exercise is to focus your attention in the region of the Ajna Center of the pituitary body. There learn the power to organize. When your problems descend upon you, when you are swept by the ancient habit of thought that you know to be wrong, but which has as yet a rhythmic power over you, then retire into your garden and work there for a short while. In time, Make your retreat into the secret garden an instantaneous reaction. When distressed and stay not there for a long time. It will aid you to break the power of the ancient thought forms. You ask, what is my gift to the group? I answer, the gift of a pure and unselfish spirit and a rare capacity to give. No greater gift can be yours. The driving urge to give selflessly with no motive but that of a pure and loving spirit. 
for you, I have these words which are your own to use. Let the pure light of reason and understanding dispel the fox in which I long have walked. Let the mists disappear and let the clouds of care disperse within the radiant light of the sun which shines ever in the fog. That sun is found within my mind. Within that sun, I stand. Okay, so this is giving us a basic, some of the basic ideas what this instruction is going to be about. And what I would like to do now is uh, we came to arrangement here with BL who is going to uh, show in the chat what I am talking about. So uh, BL could you take over now sure. and put up the natal chart on the screen Okay, it should be there. Yes, thank you. Now, uh, we have already dealt in uh, the previous webinars with a loose connection between the physical and etheric bodies, uh, which DK mentions at the beginning of these second instructions, and her devitalized condition thus indicating the lack of integration between the dense physical and etheric bodies. Now, DK is telling her that the integration between her astral and mental bodies has also been very poor. But lately, she has changed that and these two are now integrated. Now we have to be uh, uh, understanding this, what he's saying, very carefully. She entered the life with very poor integrated personality from the dense physical up to the mental body. Now the physical and etheric are still not integrated. This is her life problem, the devitalized condition. And now he is saying that uh, the astral and mental bodies have been lately uh, integrated. Now the word lately here, we have to understand that between the first and the second instruction we have two-year difference approximately. And it is through this time there was this process of integration happening between these astral and mental bodies. Now, I'm sure if she was not under the instruction, under training, a definite training by a master, this might not have happened as quickly as it did, but we are hypothesizing this. Uh, because it is not such an easy process to integrate uh, two levels, and particularly in a personality of such a poor integration as hers. And even if though he says that they are now integrated, we have to understand that the integration is relative. It is not a complete and final integration. Okay? 
because the process of the integration of the personality starts at the end of the path of probation and finish with the third initiation. Okay? So that's why I am bringing this into your attention, that we understand this uh, integration of these uh, two bodies here uh, uh, correctly. Uh, the poor integration of a personality in the chart is also indicated by the Sun Chiron conjunction in Aries. You see, BL is indicating it, right? And I have uh, discussed Chiron in detail in my last instruction. It is the wounded healer, and whenever it is connected with any planets or any energies. Uh, it is adjusting the levels of those energies. In this case, the levels of integration of the personality which is represented by that sun. Now, there are a number of planets which can be related to uh, the mental body and not one or more also to astral body. But we are going to focus on a particular planet, planets which are related to these bodies in relation to her stage of the path, level of consciousness and the astrology present. And the most focal point of these two energies of astral and mental is the conjunction between Venus and Mars, which Biel is showing you there. The astral body is conditioned by the Mars, and mental body by Venus and also by Saturn in Pisces. Uh, both Venus and Mars are making a square aspect to that Mars. And Saturn is a mental energy. It is in a, in a mental house the ha of the higher mind. And so Saturn is related to both the mental unit found on the fourth mental subplane representing the lower concrete mind and the mental permanent atom or higher mind where actually by the house placement the Saturn is there placed. Okay. Mercury in Aries, it's another mental energy where Mars is the ruler of Aries, right? So we have a relationship established between that Mercury and the Mars in Taurus, right? Because Mars rule, rule Aries, and it is automatically dispositing of that Mercury energy. Indicates also the control of the astral body, which is the mass, by the mind, which is the Mercury. So, thinking and mind are the most important factors and the first priority to consider when we uh, when we entering into the psychology of the person when we want to know the person we need to first know how he thinks or she thinks how the mind works and there are two primary planets which are related uh, and really dealing with the mind, and these are Mercury and Venus. 
okay? Now we see these two planets are very powerfully placed in its esoteric rulership. Venus is the esoteric ruler in Gemini and is placed in Gemini, which means it's a sole rulership. And Mercury is the esoteric or sole ruler of Aries. It doesn't automatically mean when we find this powerful esoteric placement of planets that we say to ourselves, wow, you know, I am working on the soul levels. No, it is not the case. It is the possibility to do so and it is up to our own application to really reach that level of the placement of that planet. So, when we look at the Mercury, it, it represents five levels of the mind. The concrete mind, son of mind or the unitive mind or the soul mind, intuitive mind, and atmic or nirvanic mind. And we need to align the disciple CDP to one of these levels or it could be transference from one of these levels to the other. Venus represents a kamamanas or desire mind, the appreci appreciating mind, a loving understanding, intelligent mind, higher mind, and soul mind. It is uniting beauty and truth in their highest aspects. So, if we take the mental body as conditioned by Mercury and Venus, we see a powerful relation between that Mercury in Aries where Venus has its detriment and Venus in Gemini where Mercury is the orthodox ruler. And here we see the implication of changing of the levels from Kamamanas to Soul Mind or higher mind through Venus and from concrete mind to higher mind through Mercury. With the goal with the Mercury to go to the intuitive level of perception through that Mercury. And Aries, as we all know, has a mantra for the soul, I come forth and from the plane of mine I rule as a soul, right? So Aries indicates the higher mental plane uh, with its mental permanent atom on the first highest mental subplane indicating the higher or abstract mind. Uh, I was going to discuss these levels of this Mercury and Venus mind, but I decided to leave it uh, for either later today or for the next webinar because it will take a little bit longer time and I have a lot to talk about. There is also relation between Mercury in Aries and Saturn in Pisces. And what is the relationship? Saturn has its fall in Aries, where the Mercury is placed. You follow that? 
PL, please. Thank you. And Mercury has its fall in Pisces where the Saturn is placed. Okay? And this is a very powerful relationship between two mental energies. Mercury is in the 10th house of Capricorn, where Saturn is the ruler. And Saturn is in the 9th house of the higher mind. Here we see the process of achieving of the ending of the karmic and destructive ancient thought forms which, Capri, which Saturn uh, is the indicator of and the concrete mind of Mercury coming to the power of the abstract mind and stabilization upon the plane of the soul or the higher mental plane. And now uh, I would like uh, BL to bring the four wheels of the progressions because now we're going to look what is happening by progression when this uh, mental and astral bodies are integrating. What are these planets in relation to these bodies are doing, if anything? Do you want June 1933, which is the date of the instruction, or uh, June I would, 1932? Uh, I would like, uh, yeah, I would like um, uh, early, uh, go to early 1933, okay. which is the, uh, which is the, uh, just a moment, you see that Mercury semi-sextile mass on top? Could you bring it uh, two months or three months forward? When it is being more or less exact. Uh, could you go to the Mercury progressed at 29 degree Gemini? there. That is the major progression by Mercury which is going retrograde at 29 Gemini and it is making an aspect to the mass, NATO mass at 29 degree Taurus by semi-sextile. Now, here we have a process of integration happening between the mental body, Mercury, and mass, astral body. Okay? This aspect is one of the indicators of this integration process. Now we look at the solar arc, just a moment before we jump there. I would say that the NATO mass at the 29 degree of Taurus carries uh, the midpoint of Sun Mercury, which is very significant to the integration of the personality related to the Sun and Mercury as the mental body. And now if you bring the chart to the early 1933, somewhere January, February, and we see that transiting Mercury in the nine house a three degree in Pisces activating the NATO Venus Saturn square uh, 
representing the mental body and Mercury by solar arc at 3 degree Gemini. So we have an alignment of energies at this particular moment in relation to the mental body. Transiting Mercury, solar arc Mercury, and the natal a Venus square Saturn aspect. This is a very powerful combination of mental energies to find together from all levels, transits, major integration and progressed integration. Now when we look at Venus by solar arc and we go Venus Right? At 25, is it 25? No. You have to go back. Because this is a process, we follow here through the two years. So we need to move the wheel, you know, when these aspects and which one of them are happening. Okay. You are there. It's okay. Where did you go? You can go even further uh, to the 1932. To, 19, June. to June of 1932? Yes. Okay, that's forward. You can go just by month. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Now, we see that the Venus by solar arc is at 29 degree of Cancer. And it is making a sextile aspect to the natal mass at 29 degree of Taurus. And here is a reflection of the Venus mass conjunction natally, but now by progression between the astral body mass and Venus by solar arc representing the mental body. Okay? The solar arc Venus uh, reaches also very important midpoint, which is the mass node midpoint, thus emphasizing the mass energy and the node, node which is uh, very unitive and integrating energy and thus indicated the desire to form a union through mutual cooperation to bring the astral and mental bodies into working relationship or integration. That's why the midpoints are very important because they give us a lot of information which otherwise we would not see or miss altogether. Now, the opposition of, go to September 1932, just few months in front. You just follow it by month, okay. And we note that by transit there is opposition between the transiting Saturn in Capricorn and Mars in Cancer by transit. And these two transiting very important planets also representing the astral and mental bodies, Mars, Saturn, 
planet of discipleship and testing and they are making aspect to the transiting Chiron in Taurus and they are uh, activating the solar arc Venus sextile aspect to the natal mass okay and it is interesting as I mentioned before that whenever we are adjusting levels a Chiron must be always involved and so it is also here we note that the progressed Venus at 25 degree Cancer is squaring the natal Chiron at 25 degrees Aries. Now here this aspect is showing us adjustment in the mental body through that Venus. And the emphasis is also of this aspect uh, emphasized by the transiting mass Chiron conjunction in June 1932. You see it there in Taurus. 25 degree Taurus conjunction between the mass which represents the astral body with Chiron now adjusting the level of energies in the astral body and it is activating the very important aspect which we looked at which is the progressed Venus in Cancer at 25 degree squaring the natal Chiron at 25 degrees Aries now the most fundamental aspect now to all this integration is showed by the progressed ascendant at 15 degree Leo coming to the conjunction of the Uranus at 15 degree Leo now these sort of aspects uh, uh, you know when they happen between the major progressed ascendant indicating the sole purpose and the natal planet and we see that the ascendant by progression will also reach the conjunction to the progressed Uranus which is not far away it indicates a big readjustment and change an awakening to the impression of a higher level of energy through that Uranus. Okay? It means in relation to the sole purpose, it, it is fulfilling part of that sole purpose through the important level of personality integration which is also seen by the Uranus trine aspect natally to the Sun in Aries okay because Sun represents the personality and we following the process of uh, personality integration So, this is, these are very important relationship of the right kind of energies, planetary, from all levels of transit, solar arc, and major progressions, indicating the integration of the astral and mental bodies. 
And so these energies of desire and mind represents the two major energies dominating us at the early stages of development. And so the integration represents a major step forward in the integration of the personality where the mind as the highest aspect of the personality acts at the beginning as the integrating agent. When the soul contact is gradually being established, it is the soul via the mind who start to influence the integrating process more consciously by the pledged disciple. And this is where CDP is standing. She is a pledged disciple at the early stages of the path of discipleship entering the path of accepted discipleship. And there is no integration without polarization upon the fourth mental subplane, where we find the mental unit representing the lower concrete mind, because it is the mind which starts to integrate the lower levels first. Um, we need to realize that, you know, the process of the integration of the personality, as I said before, you know, it's a long one. And CDP, uh, which DK say uh, is an average disciple, uh, at the early process of this integrating process, she has taken the first initiation. And without being under the definite training by the Master, we have to question if she would have even reached this level of the integration which she reached. Thus, the emergence of the personality ray in its power, clarity, and recognition gradually start to emerge on the path of accepted discipleship. That's why it is not easy for us to recognize sometimes even the mental ray, forget the personality ray or the soul ray. And some of you know, some people think of the monadic ray, when they don't even know their mental ray. A lack of integration uh, can be an effect of subtle causes in the astral and mental bodies. Because the etheric body is essentially only the transmitter and not the originator of causes. And it reacts to all the conditions found in the subtle bodies, and in this case the astral and mental. Uh, the inertia of the etheric body and its lack of vitality and its poor coordination with the physical body is also related to the abnormal activity of the glands in the physical body. Uh, we know that the glands condition the physical expression of man as well as his emotional and mental states depending upon the degree uh, of the ability to find expression through the medium of the physical body. But the glands don't condition the inner states uh, or states of consciousness, but they can and they do prevent those inner states free outward expression or manifestation. So the effectiveness 
of the transmission of the inner energies to the physical body or the physical plane through the etheric depends always upon the chakras which condition the glands, which in turn determine the nature and the express consciousness of man. Now, in the case of CDP, the glands and the centers involved in relation to her astral body would be particularly the pancreas and its externalization, the solar plexus center, and the thymus gland and its externalization, the heart center. And in relation to her mental body, it would be particularly the thyroid gland and its externalization, the throat center. And the pituitary body and its externalization, the ajna center. Depending upon the degree of the development, activity and awakening of these centers, and the degree of the development of these glands. So we could have a situation where a center could be awakened but is not being used and need to be brought into relation or under the control of other center through the use of a particular breathing exercise or meditation technique to bring it into activity. Uh, and thus to uh, cultivate a particular quality or increase of radiation or magnetism. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, as DK is telling us, that any of the centers which have allied closely with them, certain of the major ductless glands, and at the same time have no large organ, such as the heart or stomach, connected with them, develop more slowly and are more carefully protected through the process of their development than are the centers with a major physiological organ closely connected with them. These are the words of decay. And we should take notice of that. For instance, the thymus gland in conne is connected to the heart center, right? And the pancreas with the solar plexus. At the same time, the energy pouring through the centers can be deflected into large physical organisms such as is the heart and the stomach. Therefore, when these centers are being developed or stimulated, they carry far less physiological danger than those which are not so related. For example, uh, the Ajna center is related to the pituitary body, but there is no large physical organism to carry off the energy contacted. The etheric web, therefore, in its locality, especially, uh, is specially reinforced. And uh, the activity of the center is more slowly going forward. There were some disciples who didn't have Ajna active and had to work on its development, and CDP was one of them. And she was uh, developing it through building of her garden, as we have read in the instruction, through the visualization process uh, and imagination. And just to be aware that it is Ajna, which is related to the personality life and to the personality integration process. So for CDP, have extra importance. I thought it would be good to indicate these interrelations uh, and interdependence of these various levels of energies behind 
the process of integration. And obviously, uh, they are uh, influencing also our health automatically. And this is what I find so interesting to, to, to include the health area with all these processes uh, of alignment, integration, focusing from lower to the higher levels and how they affect our health. We know that the astral body is distinguished by sensitivity, feeling, emotional activity, magnetic force of desire. And then the astral body or the astral plane is closely linked with the solar plexus and its transference to the heart center. And again, this process of transference uh, lasts three initiations. Everything is interconnected to everything else. And at the second initiation, the control of the astral body and emotional nature is broken. Uh, and uh, giving the gradual, gradual, but growing control to the intuition from that point on. Because it was the, uh, the emotion of blocking astral body which was preventing to move towards that intuitive uh, focus. Uh, it is through the controlled astral body that the love energy of the soul must pour into the heart center through the gradual transference of its energies from the solar plexus to the heart. So for CDP up to now, prior to the astral mental body integration, as we are told by DK, the sixth ray astral was the dominating influence in her life. And the sixth ray unreasoning devotional personality found the line of least resistance to the astral body. And thus to the solar plexus, leading to increased emotionalism and glamour, major glamour. She was swimming in all kinds of glamours and is still even after this integration. This obviously resulted also in intensification of the emotional nature of the desire. Uh, and the most powerful sign of desire is Taurus, which she has very powerful in her chart, right? She has uh, a Neptune, her most important planet, ruling her sole purpose, Cancer Ascendant, is in Taurus, and so is Mars, which is even more activating the desire nature. And the mass conjunction to Taurus, uh, to Pluto in Taurus, and conjunct Venus, you know, it is a powerhouse of emotion there, controlling her relationships, where the sixth ray personality focus in the astral body was the directing force in, the, in her relationships with people she loved. That's why she was related to them as personalities, not as souls. And her sixth ray physical body is the servant of her astral body. They are both on the sixth ray energies. So thus much of her problems lies in the relation of her sixth ray existing between three levels, personality, astral and physical bodies. where the astral and physical are automatically the servants of the personality, being all of them conditioned by the sixth ray. So her clinging love 
filled with fear of losing those she loved, reflects this powerful six ray energy and we see a powerful emphasis on the water sign in her chart which are the Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces energies with the important placements in these charts and Cancer is her rising sign. Uh, when we, we need to read DK very carefully. Did you notice the sentence when he says, at the beginning of the instruction he say, no longer will your astral body, and in brackets he said, which walks, he didn't say walked after the integration, no. She still is walking in the veil of the glamour of illusion. And if we missed that word, walks, that we will miss the point here. Yes, the mind is taking control, but it doesn't mean that the astral body is out of glamour. So even she has integrated the astral and mental bodies, the astral body is still under the influence of the glamour, of the astral plane. It means that the six ray personality focus in the six ray astral is remaining, uh, but is modified by the controlling and detached energy of the fifth ray mental body because the mind as the highest integrating aspect is now controlling factor of the astral body. Okay? A strong six ray body needs constant discrimination and very strong discipline. That's why we see in the NATO chart the square aspect between the Mars and Saturn. Mars, the astral and Saturn is the controlling influence and it's a mental energy. Okay? So we see already we are coming with the NATO chart which has a predisposition of this integrating process and control and shifting of energies. And so the strong six ray body also needs the guidance of the soul illumined mind. But you see DK is telling her she had intensely analytical fifth ray mind but she lacks discrimination, which she very much needs. Now, would we say that if we have a fifth ray or third ray mind, it's an automatic assumption on our part that, you know, we can discriminate. But here we are, the powerful six ray, uh, six ray energies uh, go against that. And so this is complicating her problem further. Because the six ray astral body usually has a powerful emotional needs uh, uh, with the urge towards constant fulfillment, satisfaction of these needs and desires. In her chart we see the critical mass at 29 degrees, that's why we always need to, uh, we need to notice a planet which is in the last degree of a sign and is in aspect to a planet which is a different sign to the, to the, to the sign where the planet is. And this Venus-Mars conjunction from these two 
different signs, Taurus and Gemini, indicate, indicate the shift from the astral, Taurus, to the mental, Gemini. And that's why this conjunction is the focal point of the integration process between the astral and mental bodies. And it is in the house of Pisces, the 12th house, this conjunction. This is her prison and fear. And Mars is the, also the ruler of Scorpio, where we find the moon. Okay? Which is in a Pisces decanate of Scorpio. We see the powerful relation between the Pisces house of that conjunction Yes, and the uh, Venus Mars conjunction in the 12th house. A powerful relationship between these two placements. Because, you know, the moon also represents the astral body. It's the ruler of the lunar lords, the four lunar lords four lower bodies. And the relationship between this Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces energies also is producing very powerful psychic nature here. Um, the sixth ray is a ray of love, you know, but usually from the beginning very selfish love, not, not a wise love. It is a cleaning love, filled with fear, and tendency to inferiority, which is reinforced by that sun Chiron conjunction. It also indicates inferiority in the personality expression. So when the astral and mental bodies uh, became integrated, the mind started to take a gradual control, we are told, right? Under the increasing light of the soul illumined mind. Uh, because the fifth ray is the ray conducive to illumination also, as we know. And thus shifting the Kama Manasik or desire mind of Venus towards the soul level, soul mind. Astrologically, the focus of the second ray soul is seen in the Jupiter in Sagittarius this is her second ray soul planet, very important planet for her. And is the ruler of Taurus, uh, sorry, uh, and its opposition to Venus, which is the ruler of Taurus. Jupiter, opposition Venus. Okay? The sign of illumination, Taurus, Ajna, relation. Okay? Um, DK is telling her to keep this soul mind alignment steady in place. Okay? Not just for one hour, but that it should become every day and a lifetime process. How many of us can achieve that? To function from the level of the soul and make it a habit. Okay? He says nothing matters but the soul. Nothing counts but service. Jupiter in a sixth house of service. Moon, habit, is the esoteric ruler of Virgo, service. 
ruling the fourth house. Virgo rules the fourth house, right? Where the moon is the sole ruler and it is the ashram. It is the relationship and service to the ashram indicated. And the moon is the ruler of her sole purpose, Cancer Ascendant. So, Uh, it is good to know that the coordination factor governs the integration process. Sometimes he mix these words when he's talking uh, about integration, he's talking, uh, he's using the words or, or coordination or the other way around. And the alignment between the soul, mind, brain is related to the soul. It is the soul establishing direct line of contact between mind and brain. And these two processes of integration of the personality and the alignment of soul, mind, brain are working together. So for example, when the soul ray energy focus is in the brain, there is indication of soul brain alignment. And when the personality ray energy is focused in the mind, then we have the physical body, uh, the astral body which is standing alone. We need to develop the alignment between the mind and brain. And the, the body where the focus of either the soul ray or the, or the personality ray is not focused, it, it, it has its own issues to be dealt with. Okay? Uh, this example is just one scenario for a particular disciple at a certain stage of the past and conditioned by a certain ray energies, which I just uh, mentioned. Um, uh, we must remember also that the line of least resistance uh, for the focal point of these ray energies in the lower vehicles is not always the way to work with, but on the contrary. So there is not a general or definite technique applicable to all. Each person has to be studied and looked at as a unique case with its own particular race because we're talking different stages of the process of integration, of alignment, level of consciousness and stage of the path. And what, what DK is doing, he is giving us a hint and occasionally he speaks directly. In the earlier part, you know, of our lives when we come into uh, incarnation, we work with what we have inherited from a previous life, okay? Either by a ray energy or, or the focus of a particular ray in a particular body. Uh, following the lines of least resistance is our way at the early part of our li lives. So it is helpful to know these lines of least resistance as these can reveal sometimes the sources of strengths. Because you know we have worked with that already for some time and so developed certain strengths and knowledge and this produced clarification for us. So we see uh, it is it is important to know where on or in which lower vehicle is the focus of the soul and personality ray energies because these condition the process of integration of the personality and the alignment uh, between soul, mind, brain, personality, soul fusion, 
these are all related to each other. And so we need to consider them uh, together in order to understand this, uh, uh, this line either of resistance or the lines which, you know, we need to apply more work and discipline. And um, uh, the gradual development of the soul-mind-brain alignment is one of the major integrating forces and an adjuster of the right conditions. These are the words of DK. So whenever we talk about adjustment, as I said, of energies, the planet Chiron is very important to look at. And when we say about this focus of these ray energies, overall the soul focus uh, is always more important than the personality focus in a particular body. Because obviously the soul is the higher directing energy. Now DK is not always explicit in this information. Uh, uh, you know, for some of the disciples he mentioned directly, but even though we need to study it very carefully even when he says it. But he gives us some clues, and this is the case with CDP, where he doesn't say directly, but he hints at the focus of this race in a particular vehicle. And giving us some examples in other disciples, he gave us some idea what to look for. But at the end, we need to work at it out for ourselves, because each person is different. And if we really want to understand, we need to go through all the instructions and study each disciple individually very carefully. That's why, you know, we need to study DK sentence by sentence very closely because each contains subtle, so much subtle and very deep information which is not apparent at the first or very superficial reading, you know. This is, this is my experience. Uh, and each technique or formula must be adapted to an individual person and his level of consciousness and stage of the past. And we must remember that there is always exception to a rule, but it must be coming from above or for very, with a very pure and higher motive and our first higher master is our soul before we reach higher levels of direction. So, in my understanding, in the case of CDP, we could have second, her second ray soul focused in the fifth ray mind and astrologically this is indicated through the Jupiter, her soul ray planet in opposition to Venus which not only represents uh, the mental body or the mind, it represents the soul mind, okay, and it represents the soul itself. Each planet can be interpreted on a number of levels depending on, one, on what processes we are focusing on. Okay? And the relation between that Venus and Mercury in Aries, which we have already looked at, both of these planets are related to the mind and mental body and both are conditioned by the fifth ray. Thus, we have through the second ray soul focus in the fifth ray mind, 
indicated alignment of soul mind. Now when we look at the six ray personality, I see it focused in the six ray astral body, still for her as a line of least resistance. And this provides for her uh, a spiritual opp opportunity, but also a definite problem. Uh, in this focus, mass as an astral body uh, is the primarily six ray energy and ruler of the astral body is also the ruler of Aries where we find the sun representing the personality. Okay? So we see, we know that uh, uh, through the process of integration the personality emerges in its power, right? Through the gradual process until we see the dweller on the threshold at the third initiation. And then mass rules this dweller because at that stage of the third initiation, mass rules the whole personality. Prior to that, mass rules both the physical and astral bodies, which in the case of CDP both are ruled by the six ray. And DK say they are the automatic servants of the six ray personality. So the personality, you see the focus, it's automatic here in that astral body. There are two other planets which are related to the personality and they are Saturn and Moon representing, you know, the lunar vehicles. And we see Saturn is placed in Pisces. The Pisces is transmitting two rays, second and sixth. And it is placed in the ninth house which is the house of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius transmits race 4, 5 and 6. So we started to have emphasis on the 6th ray. And the sun, representing the personality, is placed in the Sagittarian decanate of Aries. Okay? Where mass is the ruler, bringing us back to the astral body. That's why the mass with the six ray astral is becoming the focal point of the six ray personality and emergence of the six ray conditioning that personality. Uh, Five-minute warning. The moon, in her case, is veiling Neptune, which is conditioned by the sixth ray. And Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And moon is placed in Piscean decanate of Scorpio, where Mars, Mars again, rules Scorpio, and moon through Pisces is related to Saturn, which is in Pisces. Okay? Mars is placed in Taurus of the astral desire, where moon has its exaltation. Another relationship between that moon in Scorpio and Piscean decanate and Mars is in a Piscean house, the prison, the astral energies of the fear, worry. And Mars is found in the Capricorn decanate of Taurus and is thus related to Saturn, which is the ruler of Capricorn, and this is strengthened by the mass square to that Saturn 
astral body, mass, controlled by personality, Saturn. Now, the final thing, as I am being warned here that uh, even I could have another one hour to what I want to say. Uh, what we see here that each planet, each house, every point in the chart can be interpreted on a number of levels and we need to find all the relationship between these levels, uh, between the houses, signs, planets and align those levels to the level of consciousness and the stage of the path of the person under consideration. Thus we need to know the person. And possess not only the academic knowledge, but we need to utilize the intuitive perception at least to the degree which we are able to do that. Um, Uh, now, I, I better stop here because then I would want to speak about the alignment between the soul and brain and why the brain is being conditioned or the physical body by the sixth ray. Uh, this is very, inf uh, very important for us to understand that but I don't want to start, uh, uh, I will start with that at the uh, next webinar. So I thank you for your attention and hope you got some, something from this which you can use in, in your own processes. Uh, okay. Okay, I don't see any comments or hands raised, so I guess everybody got every single word that you said because it was all so fascinating. Thank you, Biel. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I welcome any comments or any questions, uh, but if there are not any, just try to, you know, go more slowly through this process. And those of you who are into astrology, you know, to, to look at this relationship uh, of the natal chart and then the progressions, uh, because, you know, it is uh, needing a time to digest. Yes, and it's, it's so helpful to us to hear, to sit and listen to you go through this entire process. We do have a couple of comments that are thanking you for um, going through this for us and, and showing us how to do it and how meticulous that it is and the various different uh, layers that are involved. Thank you. Okay, if there's no more questions or comments, then I will close out the webinar. Thank you, Elena. Thank you for everybody uh, staying with me. Okay, some more thank yous, but uh, I'll send those to you so you have them, okay? Goodbye, okay. everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you again.